Hello, Instagram. Good to see you today. I'm Tracy with Tracy's Fancy, and I'm live on Dixie Bell's Instagram page here, and hello, Facebook. I'm live with you guys tonight as well. Welcome to Whimsical Wednesday, where we go live every single Wednesday night and work on whatever I have going on in my shop at this time. So tonight, we're going to do two things tonight. We're going to learn how to paint those pesky, difficult, courtly check that everyone loves from Mackenzie Childs. Um, there are many ways that you can do that, but I happen to be doing it on this rocking horse right here behind me, which is for a client of mine. <clears throat> and I'm gonna show you, I've already done the other side, and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do this side. I decided to wait and do it live with you guys tonight so y'all could actually watch me in action, and you can ask any questions that you might have. And then after we finish that, um, I'm going to pull out the Voodoo Gel Stain and show you guys how you can use it as a glaze to darken, accent, add depth to your projects over your paint, and I'm gonna tell you all the ins and outs of Voodoo Gel Stain. So if y'all have any questions about that, please stick around for that part of the video as well. Please say hello when you hop on. Let us know that you're here. Dixie Bell is behind the scenes as well. I believe we have maybe Logan is who was supposed to be with us tonight, moderating, answering any questions that you might have. And then Matt, would you wanna say hi? Hi guys. Matt. We've got a bunch of people tuning in right now. We got a hundred on from awesome. all over. Awesome. Couple happy birthdays. Oh yes, and it's my birthday. Woo -hoo! It's my birthday. I'm 35 today. Um, <laughs> just kidding. I'm 56. So I'm 56 years old today. April the 7th. That is my day. That's my favorite number is seven. Um, what? I can only see two rows of comments. <laughs> so it's going to be hard to keep up. Okay, that's okay. Um, Anyway, thank you all for those of you that are saying happy birthday. Um, I've had a lot of fun this week sharing some of my favorite things online, so I appreciate that so much. So I didn't want to skip out on my Dixie Bell Live tonight. I want to continue on with these projects. Please let us know where you're tuning in from. Dixie Bell loves to know that. Let us know if you have any questions about their one of their gazillion amazing paints. I'm actually using their silk line tonight. So Dixie Bell has the chalk mineral paint. Um, which is their home base line. That is the line that they started with. Um, there are, you know, 56 colors. It's amazing. I think it's 56 is the number. I always forget. Um, amazing, amazing paint that blends really well, works beautifully together. You can make your own colors. Uh, it works well with water. Um, you know, you can just do magic with chalk mineral paint. You really can. But it also um, has its... Uh, specialty type paint reasons that you need to do things like use certain top coats with it or make sure that you block wood tannins and that sort of thing. So um, they came out with what's supposed to be a simpler version of paint for people that want a built-in top coat and a built-in uh, bonding primer or blocking primer, not bonding primer, a built-in blocking primer and a built-in top coat, sort of like an all-in-one paint. Um, and they've called it their silk line. And the silk line is beautiful. It's a much more muted line. Um, the chalk mineral paint has lots and lots and lots of bold colors. Um, and the silk line is a little bit more muted, but it has a, um, a beautiful finish. It's like working with silk. It has a beautiful finish to it. It uh, has kind of, it's not really a matte. It's like a, got a little bit of a sheen. It dries with a little bit of a sheen. This entire rocking horse behind me has been done with the silk line. All of the a lot of the colors from the silk line. No, no chalk mineral paint on the rocking horse at all. So I will be using that to do this black and white check, which I'm going to turn around and get started right now. Uh, something that I did notice when I use silk to do the black checks on top of white, silk is a thinner paint. Chalk mineral paint is a much thicker paint. Silk right out of the jar is a thinner paint. So it's a little bit easier to get like a super crisp line, which I like, but because it's thinner, it does require me going back to put a second coat on my black checks, which, you know, sometimes with the chalk mineral paint, I can get away with just doing one coat on the checks. Well, they're a lot of work, so going back and doing a second coat, mm, you know, it doesn't, there's pros and cons but it works beautifully to get a super crisp line. So I was like, hmm, this is interesting. That's an interesting point. So I'm gonna turn around and, and share, show you how to do it. Kathy says she's been seeing people saying that you can use Boss as a, as a bonding primer on metal. Is that right? <clears throat> Boss as a bonding primer on metal? I would not. I would use 
slick stick, Kathy, which I'm thinking that's probably why you're asking the question. So Dixie Belle has slick stick as a bonding primer. It's to be used on metal, glass, plastic, anything slick, um, slick and shiny. And then Boss is really made to be used as a blocking primer and a bonding primer, but for, um, I use it on mostly on woods. So um, yeah, on metal, I would go, I mean, especially if it's like a slick aluminum or, um, you know, if it's like a rough iron, then yeah, I think you could go ahead and use Boss. I'm talking like a, a weathered iron. So I guess it really depends on the type of metal. But when I first hear you, and when you when Matt reads that question to me, I'm thinking like a metal bucket, you know, a slick metal bucket. I would use, I use slick stick on metal. I, do, I paint a lot of metal, a lot. I paint teapots and I paint gumball machines and I use slick stick, so. Christine wants to know if that horse is a customer piece. Yes, the horse is a customer piece. Um, <laughs> she is a good old, old friend of mine and they're from Magnolia, Texas. And she brought me her horse and I am almost done with it. The other side will be done. The flip side, which we'll see in just a minute, uh, will be finished when I get finished glazing it tonight. And then I'm gonna do some fine dusting with some gold in some areas. But let's turn around and get going on this. So um, this right here is, I put one coat of their, um, I don't know all the names very well on the silk line because I'm still new to using it. So uh, this is salt water. This is salt water. So this is the white of salt water. It's a, it's, there's another white as well, but this one, salt water is the equivalent to me of what fluff is in the chalk mineral paint, which fluff is my favorite color. It's one of the top sellers for Dixie Belle. Um, in the chalk mineral paint line. So this one's salt water. This has a single coat. It has slick stick first. I use slick stick first, guys, on this because this isn't wood. This is a some sort of uh, engineered, uh, like, I don't even know what you would call this product, uh, like a resin, some sort of a resin product, I think, that they poured into a mold. Um, so it had a really slick surface on it. So I used slick stick first, and then I used, um, and which is white, and then I used one single coat of salt water. So that is done. And this is what we're gonna do next. Let's draw out some checks. There are many ways to skin a cat. I love saying that. I never, I don't really know where that came from. I think I Googled it one time because people asked what it means. I don't know why people say that. It's kind of really gross too. I don't know why we say that, but there are many, many ways to go about this. I also teach a taped check method that you can do with tape. It's a lot of tape. It takes a lot of time and you still don't get a perfect check. So it just takes practice to get a really, really good check. It just takes practice, whether you're using the tape method or not. Um, you could tape off at least your vertical stripe for size, but that was a little wider than I wanted and a little skinnier, but I have this little plastic ruler. It's a little thinner than a normal ruler and I really like the size of it. So this is what I use on a lot of my pieces. So um, what I'm gonna do here is I just eyeball I don't measure, so I'm gonna have to talk loud, guys, because I, I don't have a mic on. Um, I just sort of eyeball this center. I want this to be right under here. So I'm just gonna come down right here, and I'm gonna hold this up, and I always sit right in front of my piece, just like this, so that I make sure that my ruler isn't cockeyed, you know, to the left or to the right. So I'm gonna get it right in the middle, and I just hold it still, and I'm gonna use my pencil, and I'm just gonna draw a line on both sides, just like that. I'm gonna move it over and I'm gonna keep going. So as long as that first one is straight, you should be fine moving across the horse. Okay, Matt, so while I do this, you wanna read off to me some comments that are coming up? Did you hear me? Yes, <laughs> I'm scrolling back. <laughs> I'm like, well, hello, where'd you go? So I'm just moving all the way across, just, just like this. Gail says this is amazing. Aw, thank you, Gail. Think, is that Gail, uh, I don't know how you say your last name. Does it start with an R, Re, Reum, or I don't yes. know how you say it. Hi, sweetie. Hi there. If I don't know how to pronounce your last name, I'm just sticking with the first name. Yes, do. I just sometimes want to know who I, who I am talking to. I don't know how to say Gail's last name either. I've hugged her neck, and I don't know how to say her last name. Nina says, how are you? Hi, sweet girl. I'm good, Nina. I'm good. Sweet. Nina loves whimsy. Sue, Sue Walters is on. Hi. She says happy birthday. Love thank, you, Sparkly. Thank you. She calls me Sparkly, which is also our dog's name. Our dog had oral surgery today, y'all. Oh, wow. We thought she just had a, an abscess, 
and she had a tumor. So they had to take a, a, an oral tumor out today. And she lost seven teeth. <laughs> Tammy said, oh, so pretty. Thank you. So we'll just keep going. And oddly enough, because this is, thank you, Tammy, because this is a, a curve, it actually messed with my head a little bit. And I felt like it was crooked or that my line started to go off. But once it was finished and painted, I just had to trust that I'd drawn it out correctly. Um, it looks amazing. And y'all are going to see it when I turn the camera on the other side. You'll see it's done on the other side. Nina loves whimsy. Uh, she does. She does. All right. So now I'm going to go the opposite direction, which is a little awkward because I have to move my pencil to this side. The only problem with doing pencil, you guys, is uh, pencil will smear as you run. So you have to try really hard when you do use pencil. If you're new to this, um, try not to rub your hand across it as you're painting. You know how we lay our hand like that and you put this part of your hand on the surface, whatever you're painting, this part of your hand will turn black and you'll end up smearing, uh, smearing your pencil. So you want to either lay a, a napkin down over it. That really helps. Another piece of paper will keep your hand from smearing your pencil. I just do it by not putting my weight on it. But if you're new, you're probably going to get some pencil smear. Claudia says she loves to watch your projects come together, and she's learned so much from you. Oh, Claudia, thank you. Thank you for saying that. Oh. You know, I posted that this isn't done yet, and, and I wanted y'all to understand why I posted it, I believe, yesterday or day before. Um, you know, these really whimsical pieces like this, y'all, um, you can see in comparison that it's sitting on top of this large buffet that we started last week, uh, and it's not near the size, right? But these pieces take forever. They take a really long time. I don't know what they're seeing, probably nothing, are they? <laughs> uh, these pieces take a super long time. They just do. You, it's a lot of detail. It's no different than if you uh, are painting like a, a small, um, you know when y'all see me paint those little side tables and you paint every little nook and cranny and all the knobs and it's kind of like that. Christine says her dog was diagnosed with cancer, but you wouldn't know it because she's still kicking. Oh, that's awesome, Christine. They, they said they were going to send it off for a biopsy and uh, let us know, but uh, also I guess that this type of tumor is very common in dogs' mouths, and they're usually benign, so, so we shall see. Okay. Sue started doing a, a checkerboard planter today. Oh, Sue, I'm so proud of you, hon. You're so good. You're good at whimsy stuff. Okay, so now I'm going to hold this up. I'm going to go sideways with it. So what I did was, can you move this a little bit, baby, please? Thank you. What I did was, um, I, just, I didn't measure. What you, what you want to make sure you do is whatever width you choose for your vertical stripe, you need your horizontal stripe to be the same size so that it's obviously a perfect square. So you want to use either the same tool or make sure that you've measured it. So what I did was I just held this down. I wanted it to go from curve to curve just like that. I held it right across. I made sure that this side of the ruler hit this side of the ruler and it's kind of right down the middle. That is how I chose where I wanted my center line of check to be. So I just drew a line above it just like that. Held it safely in place and draw a line across the bottom just like that. Karen says you're amazing at what you do and Juana says happy happy birthday. Thank you Karen and thank you sweet Juana. Dana loves this. Dana, who's the, I Amber think. Amber says happy birthday. Thank you, Amber. Okay, so you see what I did here, guys? I put this, in order to make sure you're straight, as long as you keep enough of your ruler or whatever tool you've got within its own pattern over here, you'll know that the rest of this is straight because you've put it right into its little puzzle. So I took that across that way, and then I'm gonna go over here and do the exact same thing. Just set it inside. And that way I know it's straight and just run my pencil across like that, okay? Then I'm going to do the same thing above it, the next row up. So I'm going to put my ruler like this far enough back that I know that I haven't curved one way or the other. Hold it in place and go above it and just run it across. And I'm going to keep doing that as I move up. Just keep moving my ruler up. Make sure I'm staying against that line and drawing my check up and just keep making my way up, and this will be my last row like that. See that? 
Now, when you look at that, it looks a little, to me, does that look wonky to you? It looks a little wonky, but it isn't. Matt says no, but in my eye, it, it does. So we're gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna go over here and lay our ruler out across that line. That way we know we're straight. Take our pencil across and just keep moving it up. And Nina's cat's been to the vet every day for the last three days. Oh, Nina, I'm sorry. You know what, Nina? I think I, I think I remembered. I'm sorry, girl. It's so stressful. Yeah, we, uh, we didn't even know that our dog was sick until yesterday. Okay, for some reason, this is the rocking horse rocker part is a little bigger on the front side. So I actually have a little piece of a square that's up there where this side we didn't. But that's because, it, you know, it's man-made. It's imperfect. It was a mold. It's not perfect. Um, but my squares are perfect. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> okay, so let's do some painting, shall we? Shall we? Uh, anchor. This is the black. The blackest of the black in the silk line okay so give it a good shake this is anchor and we're not going to do all these squares we would be here this this is only going to get done afterwards when no one's around and i turn the music on and i can be out here for a while so when i shake it i usually end up using whatever i've got in my lid uh, to get myself started so let me show you um my brushes all right so here's an, a variety of brushes that I have that are close to this size, right? But look at them. And Diane I've, wants to know if that's a transfer on the top of the base. Sorry to interrupt. Oh my gosh, we'll talk about that in a minute. That is the decoupage paper. This is the decoupage paper and this, it's up here too. You can't see it very well on, on the top. Let me grab what it looks like. Let me yeah, that's a good question. Thank you for asking that. That is called pallet wood. It's in plastic though. Can y'all see it very well? Mm -hmm. Pallet wood. Isn't it beautiful? It's beautiful. It looks like plank wood with tiny little rosebuds on it. It looks super distressed and I love it, which is pretty cool because these were actually planks across the bottom of this piece. So it was perfect. Um, so I just laid it up there and instead of having to paint the planks pretty, I just decoupaged the paper with the new decoupage paper. Um, okay, so these are what my brushes look like, y'all. This one is still in pretty good shape, nice and flat. This is what they end up looking like, okay? This is what they end up looking like. I can't paint squares with that, right? So if you're going to paint squares, you need to make sure that you've at least got a brush that's still in pretty good shape and that you will be able to get yourself a good edge with and get into the corners really well. A lot of times when you, I honestly believe when you are a beginner, at painting squares, it's best if you, instead of using a square cut brush like this, I think it's easier for beginners to use an angle brush. And when I teach this in my courses, I teach it with an angled brush. Um, it just makes it easier to get that point of that brush up into the corner of that square and pull down and then turn it and put the point in the square and pull different directions. So this is for beginners and until you get really proficient or if you have a less steady hand, this is a better brush to use. What I've done is I went and bought, I invested a little bit of money at Home Depot, at Home Depot, Hobby Lobby, and I bought a really good um, brush with good bristles that's brand spanking new and I did the other side with it. I washed it really well, and I'm gonna take super good care of it so it doesn't end up looking like these. These are just the, ch the uh, cheap, crafty brushes. So this is what I'm gonna, this is what I used on the other side, and I loved it. Um, but I will say, having a big square fill this up is a little more difficult, it's a little bit more advanced, so if you're just starting out, I would make sure you get yourself an angle brush to start out with, that's, that's my opinion. All right, so here we go. I'm going to dip just, just like this, just a tiny bit. Is that a makeup brush? No, this is not a makeup brush. This is a brush from uh, Hobby Lobby in the actual painting painter's aisle where they sell individual brushes that you can pick, like, you know, by the, the oil paints and the, the oil paints and the acrylic paints and stuff like that. Okay, so here we go. Matt, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I'm just gonna pick a spot. Let's pick our center spot right here. So I'm gonna lay my brush right up by that edge. 
and each square is going to get two pulls. So one, and then I come back down here again, right on that corner, and I'm going to pull, and that's it. I leave it. I leave it right there. I move on. So I go on to the next one, which is, you skip, skip one. I can't talk when I do it. And you, let's try it without re-dipping. Let's go do our second one. You dip, you dip, I dip, we dip. So you can do it without re-dipping if you want. Skip one, right on the edge. Okay, two pulls to each square. Now, something that will help you is if you sort of support your hand, just like this. So let's say we're gonna go over here to this one. Let's see, that one's white, this will be black. So if I kind of support my hand, you can put a little more pressure and deliver a little bit more paint. See how that one's a little bit darker than the rest of those because I was able to deliver a little bit more paint. So this one has a lot of paint there. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull down. So I'm gonna flip my brush, go into the top corner and pull down. Then I'm gonna flip my arm I'm gonna go into this bottom corner. The furniture duchess says you're so good at this, her hands are a lot shaky. And pull up. I know, I know. If, if, if you can get some, if you've ever watched people on, in actually Mackenzie Child's Artist, they use a rod. They have like this wooden rod. I don't know what it's called, but they use that to support themselves. I just use my hand because I don't have a piece of furniture here or anything to support my hand. But normally I don't finish squares all at once. I do all one direction. Mm -hmm. So if y'all weren't here, I would just keep moving this way and doing all my, just two swipes per square. One, two, like that. So do you ever go over those two or three times to try to make it uniform or does that mess up your squares? Uh, that, sorry, that's a great question. Uh, yes, I usually, if I'm using chalk mineral paint, um, I can do it in one coat. Uh, the silk paint is a little bit thinner, so it's a little bit more translucent on the first coat, so I am having to go back, but it's thinner and it makes it easier to, it actually makes it easier to work with for the checks. I, I really like it. I probably will always use this for my checks. Even if I'm using a chalk mineral paint on my project, I probably will always use silk on my checks okay so i will do everything with this direction are you part of the chalk the chalk mineral paint enthusiast group am i yes yes i am in the chalk mineral paint enthusiast group are y'all you should be you should go join the chalk mineral paint enthusiast group it's a great group you learn a lot in that group yes i am there That is a group that's actually ran by Dixie Bell. Did y'all know that? It's open to anyone, but it's it's actually run by Dixie Bell. Yeah, they were just plugging it. Oh, Dixie Bell was. That's how I know about that. Oh, you're so funny. You're the one asking that? Mm -hmm. All right, so. This is one of those things that I wouldn't be able to talk and talk very much and do this. Like I really seriously don't talk when I'm doing this. It makes it harder because it's on a it's on a rocking angle. In fact, I don't even breathe. I hold my breath. <laughs> That's another tip. Hold your breath. So here we go. We'll hold my breath. No talking, hold my breath. Somebody on Instagram just said that. Said what? That she uh, has to hold her breath like you when she paints. Yep. So. Yep, I have to hold my breath. <clears throat> and don't get too far ahead of yourself. You have to make sure that you, you know, don't mess up your black and white square pattern. I've done that. Okay, so that's that. That's what I do. I'm going to tell you that this trick, this time, uh, you saw my measuring tricks, is to get yourself a really good brush and then try the silk paint because it's really thin and it, gave, it gives me a lot of control. So then I would um, come back 
And you saw me do that one, but let's do this one. I come up here. Now, if I could flip this on its head, that would be great because I work better by pulling from into my chest out. I work better moving into my chest out, but I can't, I'd have to flip the piece or stand over it. So I'm gonna have to make do because obviously this isn't a desk or something that I can flip upside down. I can't flip the horse up on its head. So I just have to make do and what I would do is to just come in here and start in the top corner. Why don't you just use your left hand? Very funny. And I pull down, and then I probably will do it for every square. Just like that. That one's already done. Do this one. See, I'm leaving that bottom corner on each square. That's good. So then I will come back and I will turn my brush upwards, <clears throat> stick upward, and come down. And this helps to get like right in front of it. And close that up. Right in front of it. Right in front of it. And close that up. Yeah, I really do. I have to get right in front of it. Doing this on something small is a lot easier. Like a, if you want to do this for the first time, start with like a plate or a serving tray of some sort. Something that you can put in front of you that you can manipulate. Spin it in a circle and paint. Spin it and paint a little bit more. You know, you can hit your squares from every angle. That's something I really recommend you doing. When I teach this, I teach it on a plate, like a um, like a wood wooden uh, plate charger. Or the plate chargers that they sell at Hobby Lobby that are like $1.99 and they're plastic. Paint it with some slip go your comfortable direction, which for me is from my center out, center out. And then I just would keep spinning the plate and going in the same direction each time. Okay. All right. So that's that. Does anyone have any questions about it, babe? No questions. No. All right. Let's turn this sucker around. Let you guys see the other side. And we are going to use some voodoo gel stain as a glaze. I cannot wait, wait, wait. I'm probably going to post this horse as complete on Friday. Um, so y'all better show up and still be excited for it because I'm about to let y'all see the almost complete project. All right, so hold tight. Let me go put my brush in some water. We don't need to put it on the thing anymore. We can just put it on the ground. There we go. Awesome, thank you, honey. Okay, so we are gonna be down here on the ground. Um, I'm sure everything needs to be readjusted. I'll also show you all the colors that I used here, and I've got my video gel stain as well. And okay, so did y'all see the checks? Did y'all see them? Can y'all see down here on the bottom? Can they see those? Um, no. No? Hang on, let me adjust the cameras. Instagram can see. Yay, do you love her? Isn't she adorable? I love her, I love her so much. Love, love, love her. I've spent a lot of time with this horse. That is now a zebra. So, do y'all see how pretty the checks are? I'm super happy. Very, very happy with them. Um, okay, so, she is, uh, she's very sweet. She looks really good, but she looks too flat. Very, very flat. And I know that. I know this. I know she's very flat in her appearance. And so, we're about to change that. We're going to do that together. So, just like when you paint a piece of furniture, like the buffet that's behind us, um, you know, it looks very flat. You need to go in and do some embellishing, go in and 
add some depth or some highlights so that it doesn't just look like a painted surface and boom, you're done. So like her tail here, um, there's a lot of detail on this tail, but it's lost. I mean, it's very, very lost. Same thing with her mane, it's very lost. Uh, same thing with uh, the molds. I've applied all of these Would You Bend molds to it and put them on, but they're still just like there and there's not a lot of depth and dimension. Um, even the trim that I've applied down here and the little, uh, I've put little gold, looks like bolts that are actually their keyholes, the Dixie, uh, the Would You Bend keyholes. Um, I've got keyholes there painted gold, but they just are flat. They don't really stand out very much. So, um, usually uh, I like black wax. I love to do black wax on, or, or dark wax, even the besting wax in black or the besting wax in brown um, to get in all the cracks and crevices and make your piece look, you know, authentic and aged. I like that a lot. Um, so sometimes I'll make my own paint washes. I do that a lot as well. I use a paint. So let's talk about the options here. If I wanted to do a black, I wanted black in all of the cracks and crevices, I could have used caviar. Um, not my silk. I wouldn't use my silk as a wash because silk and water don't play well that well together. So I'm not, I haven't tried silk as a wash. I can't imagine that it would work. Maybe it would. I'm not sure. Um, but I would use the chalk mineral paint and caviar as a wash with a lot of water and put it on it and then wipe it all back. Or I could just cover the whole thing in black wax and then wipe it all back. The yeah. Duchess says, what a beauty. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So one of the other options is voodoo gel stain. Um, voodoo gel stain is something that I don't use it that often and I don't know why. It's a, it is an, an actual stain for wood. So you can use this on raw wood. Um, it is water-based. That's something that's so beautiful about it. Whereas the no paint gel stain is oil-based, right? So you put it on and it takes like 72 hour cure time or 72 hour dry time before you can really do anything else like put a top coat it or any on it or anything like that the beauty about the water-based stains that dixie bell has is they dry within about 20 minutes uh, you don't have to wait if you're in a hurry let's say you're working on cutting boards or uh, serving trays or signs or anything like that um, you can put these right on the wood and they're dry within minutes, not even 20 minutes. They're dry within like 10 minutes. You can go ahead and paint your words on it, put your Cricut stencil on there, stencil with our other products. Um, and it doesn't even need a top coat or you can top coat it at that point if you want. There's no like wait for it. Um, it comes in, we're using black tonight. It comes in brown, gray, uh, it comes in like a mossy green, a denim blue and a white, I believe. I think that there's seven colors. Um, so this one is black and uh, it's called Black Magic. So, you gotta shake them up really, really good. They come in these little ketchup-y, mustardy looking bottles. Shake it up really well. Oh, babe, will you have me see those little bowls up there? I need one of those little bowls. Oh, goodness, we are short on time. Let's do, let's do the tail first. We're gonna do the tail first, and then we'll do the, the mold areas. So, you wanna make sure you shake it really well because the, uh, the goodies uh, the water will separate at the top and all of the, the stain and stuff will settle down in the bottom. So you, um, I've already used this today. So it's a little bit, it's thin, but a little bit thicker. It'll come out like water and you'll know that it's, that you need to shake it up better. Um, so the thing about this is you can, I wouldn't say really that this, you can use this like a paint, but I wouldn't say that you would really want to use it like on stencils. It's very thin, so it's going to run. You would have to chase it. You know, you don't have like a whole lot of control with this product, um, but we're going to put it on and then wipe it back. So you can wipe it back with a dry cloth. You can have your sprayer and spray over it after you've put it on and remove some of it, or you can wipe it back with baby wipes. Sometimes baby wipes take off too much for me. Um, and so I like to do a cloth and rag, and we'll, we're just gonna see. We're gonna see what, what we think. Marnie just bought two of those. Which ones? The horses. What? From where? Tell me where. Everybody's been asking. Marty, can you can you plug wherever you got them? Uh, yes, and Aviance has a question. Once you paint and put the transfer on the teapots and cups, can you still use them? <laughs> we went from horses to teapots, Aviance. <laughs> hey, girl, are you taking the class with us? Are you taking my uh, teapot class? My teapot class is in like two weeks, I think. I'm super excited about it. Uh, with the Alice transfers. Um, I use them because I don't put anything on the inside of the teapots or the cups. That's what I'm telling people. I don't, I don't touch the inside of them. So... 
I don't see why not, why you couldn't use it. You can wash those things? Well, I mean, I'm not going to, I wouldn't wash them. I wouldn't submerge them in water, no. I would just wipe them down with a damp cloth or something. Okay, so I've put my uh, Voodoo Gel Stain in here, and I've just got one of my fluffy brushes, and I'm using it. Let's do, can y'all see the tail pretty good, babe? Yeah. Okay, let's just do the tail. So we're just going to put it on just like this. Now, you do, the only thing is you do need to work a little bit faster because this, like I said, it dries really fast. So we're just going to cover this whole thing up. And remember how this looked. Remember how flat it looked. It just looked like a big, giant, pastel, mint green tail, <laughs> seafoam green tail, which I'll tell you what color that was in just a second. So I've got my cloth here, my dry cloth. I can just wipe back with my dry cloth like that. Now look at it. Now, now it looks, you can see. You can see the detail in it, right? So... We can do that. Now, let me use a little bit of a baby wipe and we'll see if it makes any difference at all. And this will wash right off of you too. So this is a baby wipe and this will bring forth a little bit more of the green and see it takes off quite a bit. So big difference. So look at that tail versus the mane. Can they see the mane real well? I'd way rather have this. This looks artistic. That looks less artistic. This looks like someone who knew what they were doing did it. This looks like someone who just got excited because they painted a mane and they didn't get it anywhere else. And they're like, yay, I painted the mane in this beautiful new silk paint called Tide Pool. And it's clean and crisp and it looks good. And I would come in and go, that does look really good. And I'm really proud of you. But how about all the carving? You can't see the carving. Let's, let's accentuate the carving. This is what you do. Let's get your voodoo gel stain or your black wax or your black paint and mix it with water and rub it over and rub it off and then this is what you get. Now we didn't have to do black. I did black because a lot of the zebra has black on it, but um, you could have used brown or a color. It doesn't matter. Okay, so here is my decoupage paper, would, which, huh? Yeah. Okay. Uh, would you have to tape off the main? Uh, no, because I'm going to do the entire the horse. So you want me to do that part? I was going to do this part right here. Well, here, I'll do this part and show you. I want it, I'm going to do the horse as well. So the whole thing is going to get covered and wiped back because the horse has imperfections in it as well. There's creases. There's little pinholes. I want those things to show up, okay? I don't, I don't want it to look so flat. So here we go. We're going to do, let's just cover this entire rose. Now, Remember that this is painted in silk paint, so it's got a built-in top coat. It's got a nice little sheen on it already. Now, see how I'm going ahead and getting it on the horse? So whoever just asked the question about, you know, do you need to uh, tape off around the mane? No, you don't, because I actually want it. I want it to get everywhere, just does, like that. Does the gold need a top coat? Uh, the gold, no. The gold that I used is the... Um, the mousse, the gold mousse gemstone, but I mix my gemstone with gloss, the uh, top coat and gloss, clear top coat and gloss. I mix it and it dries really fast and really hard and does not reactivate. That's how I dry. So no, it doesn't need a top coat either. Did you coat with clear before you stained? No, I didn't. All right, so I'm putting it all over the saddle. I want it to get in all of the molds. This is scary, right? And I get it, I know. I know when I first started painting and I started waxing, I was like, what? I don't, I don't know, I'm gonna mess it up. I'm turning it all black. I worked so hard to do that Harlequin by hand on the saddle. And now I'm gonna put all this stuff on here. Nothing's gonna ever be the same. Um, but I did well, it's gonna look so good. So I probably will end up using baby wipes for this more than anything, but I'm going to get this off of the saddle first and just get it rubbed in, but see how it leaves like kind of a smudgy shaded area. I'm good with that. I like that right over my decoupage paper. Looks a little bit aged. Of course, I would put this kind of all over like this and we'll just pull that off. Now, the thing about the gold though, is I do want my gold to shimmer. So in the end, I will likely go back and uh, put more gold again. I'm probably gonna go back and put more gold. 
So before I start taking all of that off the horse, I'm just gonna start removing some of this. And this rose, look at it. Look how pretty this is gonna be. Yeah, Karina says she hasn't tried the stain yet, but it looks great. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's gonna accentuate everything. If you've got brush strokes, <laughs> if you've got pinholes, um, look at this. Isn't that beautiful? Patricia says very cool. Thanks, Pat. Thank you. The Duchess says she's got to buy some voodoo. <laughs> Good. I hope you will. And I always forget to say that, of course, you guys know that my link is up at the top of the video here. Um, my link will also take you to Dixie Bell's website where you can look for your local retailer. But if you want to order online, um, that link will, that's attached to me, so you can order online as well. Okay, so I've gotten most of it off now. Now, let's look at the difference. If that's what the dry rag took off, right? A little too dirty for me. I want that to be a little bit cleaner, so watch this. What color is that rose? Uh, that rose, by the way, is the new silk in conch. Conch. Is that the cell, shell, how you say that? Conch. A conch, conch shell? Conch. 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 That's conch. Okay, see that? That's what I want. So I don't want all of that stain left. I just want it in the creases. So I'm going to go ahead and wipe it back. That's the difference between wiping back with a dry rag and wiping back with a baby wipe or a wet, a wet rag. A wet cloth would have done the same thing. You also can just take your sprayer and you can spray it and off at the same time. So look how romantic. Doesn't it look like it's got like such a romantic vibe to it now. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to take some of this off of the tide pool. This beautiful minty sort of seafoam. Remember in the 80s, seafoam green? That's what this color is to me. Um, beautiful seafoamy green like is last car. called tide pool. Yeah, it does look like a, old, a car of ours that we had. Sure does. Um so Yvonne said she learned years ago <clears throat> when she was painting ceramics when it was all the rage of glazing and staining over pieces made all the difference. Yes, that is so funny, Yvonne, because my grandmother painted, my grandmother had a ceramics business and um, on the side, it was like her side gig. Her and my grandpa owned a printing company, but um, that is something my grandmother did. She loved to stay up late at night and paint and I would go to her house and help her paint and she taught me all about glazing, and I've been thinking about her a lot. And when the golds became available, and she would trim stuff out in golds, um, oh, we talked about the gold paint and how fancy it made things. So I've, I've been thinking about that a lot. It's really funny that you just said that. Is that right, Nina? Because I always call them conch shells, too, until I went down to the Cayman Islands and went diving. She's in, she lives in Florida. Yeah, I know. That's what she said. <laughs> yeah. Did she and say then they kept pronouncing it conch, and I was like, what is that, two different shells? So anyway, it, is, it is with a hard K? It's, the same it's a thing, hard I K guess. sound? Yeah. Okay, so what do you guys think? Do y'all like it? I love it. That looks good. I love the difference right here. So you've got this side of the horse this area that's been done versus this area up here that still looks very childlike to me, looks very, very childlike. This looks, this looks baby nursery, this looks shabby chic, right? That's, I, that's the difference to me. Mom so. says it's gorgeous, Judy loves it. Thank you everyone. This down here is bugging me a little bit, but I think it's just because I haven't done the whole horse. Once the whole horse gets done in black, once I've got, you know, let's just do this real quick. Once I've got this done, I think I'll feel better about it. But I love, love, love the flowers. So that's that, and we're just gonna wipe it back. It really yeah. tones down that hard white. Yeah, doesn't it? Doesn't look so. Yeah, now I think I'm gonna leave the this part of the zebra dirty. I call it dirty versus clean. Like the rose, didn't, I didn't like it with all the extra black on it. But the zebra, I do. Look how pretty that is. This side versus that side. That's so harsh, right? Very, very harsh and unforgiving where this looks super soft. So that's that. I hope you guys will try the Voodoo Gel Stain. I will tell you right now, black is amazing. White is amazing. White, white, white will whitewash like you've never whitewashed before. White is really cool. And then my other favorite one is the blue. I love the blue. 
It's a den it is a true denim blue. So if you've not stained wood in denim blue stain, you should try it. It's pretty cool. So anyway, guys, well, thank you all so much. Oh, real quick, let me tell you, the bottom of the horse is Harbor. So the rocking part down on the bottom is Harbor. And then the other one that I told y'all about was Tide Pool. That's this real pretty minty green color. So Harbor, Tide Pool, Saltwater and Anchor are the black and white, and Conk. Conk, pink. Conk shell. <laughs> Conk shell. Okay. All right, guys. Well, thank y'all so much. I'm going to go live on my page on Tracy's Fancy. I hope you guys will give me a like and follow over there as well. And we are uh, probably just going to keep, I had another project for over there, but I think I'm going to keep going. Um, Dixie Bell, thank you so much for having us. Thank you for your amazing products that allow us to create every single day and come together like this on your social media page. I appreciate it. And we will see you guys soon. Water or oil based? Water. Water based. This is water based. A water based colorful fun stain that dries in minutes and lets you move right on with your project if you like oil-based stains in black and brown you need to at least give these a try they will speed your project right up all right talk to you guys later thank you bye, bye, -bye.